stuff to do today, and so I'd like to go ahead and get started if that's okay with you guys. When that comes around, I'll take a picture of it and send it to your epics person. Make sure you get credit for this, but this is the epics module. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but it's about learning and education, and it's a, a four-week module. Everybody here for that? You think you are? Okay. All right. My name is Lynn Bryan. I am a professor in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction and the Department of Physics and Astronomy. I'm also the director of a center here on campus called the Center for Advancing the Teaching and Learning of STEM. My research is on the learning of physics. I used to be a physics teacher before I uh, came to Purdue and got my doctorate here. And recently my work is with uh, young children learning physics, so in kindergarten through third grade, children's capability of learning uh, some important fundamental physics concepts that will uh, influence their learning from a young age. So this is a four-week module, and we have uh, four different professors. All of us have uh, joint appointments in uh, different um, departments. I'll talk with you today about how we learn. Um, I'm guessing that many of your projects have something to do with designing some kind of a learning experience for students, or maybe you're just interested in things about education. But I'll do the best I can in 50 minutes to tell you about the last oh, 25 years of, of learning research and just boil it down to some take-home messages so that you guys can um, maybe utilize some of what you learn in here for the work that you're doing in EPICS. Dr. Weiwei Wang will be with you next week, and these are tentative uh, topics. Um, she'll be discussing the nature of the elementary school learner. Um, Dr. Jill Newton is a math educator on campus, talking about high school and middle school students. And then Dr. Paula Sunda, he's from the Polytech Institute, will uh, discuss assessment with you guys. And so we're going to get started. Uh, this is uh, not meant to be any kind of a test. If you don't know how to do it, it's OK. But it's to illustrate uh, something about what you'll learn about learning in, in just a few minutes. Uh, this is an activity that I have done. It's actually an activity that's part of a, a larger lesson a multi-day lesson that's part of a unit of electricity um, that I've done in high school, I've done this with second graders, I've done this with graduate students. Obviously the level, as the level changes, the way that we do the activities and the complexity of the work that we do changes, but I want to give you just a sense of something um, that we do in one of my classes so that we can use that as a springboard for some of our discussion today. What you have in front of you is a battery, a bulb, and a wire. Okay, and uh, when it's young children, I usually contextualize the unit in something that they're reading. There's a book that's called Dear Mr. Henshaw by Beverly Cleary, and it's usually read around the upper elementary grades, and it's about this little boy who is writing um, pen pal letters back and forth to this guy named Mr. Henshaw. He keeps having things stolen from his lunchbox, and uh, as he's walking home one day, he uh, sees, you know, some batteries or something, and he asks this guy named Chuck, hey, you know, how do batteries work, and can't quit thinking about electricity, so my kind of student, he wants to figure out how he can make an alarm for his lunchbox, and so we use that as a springboard, sort of a story to guide our lesson, and this is just a tiny little part of the lesson. We're not even going to go through the entire lesson, but I just want to illustrate something to you that will relate uh, uh, to this activity later on. What I want you to do first is I don't want you to take the stuff out of the bag. That's why I put it in the bag for kids because the first thing you want to do is put it together, right? And that's a natural tendency and it's okay. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to think, and you can talk with your partner, but on the first page, on the inside page, and this is just a small little uh, snippet of a student notebook that we make for um, kids. When I do it with high school, it doesn't have all the, you know, cute little pictures and stuff like that, a little more straightforward, and of course graduate students, and of course that I worked with them, it doesn't look like this either. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think either yourself or with a partner, how might you put together those three parts? You have a battery, and 
pretty much everybody in here has worked with a battery somehow. You have a little light bulb. It's just a light bulb that comes from a flashlight. And then you have one wire, and each end of the wire is stripped so that you can see the metal part. And I just want you to think about as many ways as you can. I don't care whether they're right or wrong. Just put yourself in the shoes of like a third grader, okay? How jazzed a third grader would be about doing this and all the ideas that they might put down. I want you to draw as many ideas as you can think of to put the battery, the bulb, and the wire together to make the light bulb light. And put yourself in the shoes of a, three, of a third grader so that you can just think about what would they draw if they could draw um, pictures of a battery, bulb, and wire. And so I'll just give you a few minutes to uh, do that. And mind you, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. It's just a starting point for the activity. Yep. So you guys might have to share one, one bag there. There's enough for about every two people. And when, when I'm working with uh, kids that are in um, elementary and middle school, I always ask them to draw a picture that's as big as their hand because when you don't know something, you like to draw these tiny little pictures that really obscure the, the details of what you're doing. So if you have room, draw something maybe as big as your palm since we have bigger hands, but try to draw it big so we can see what the, so you can see what the details are. And it's okay to talk to each other. Try to get at least two ideas. And if you have at least two ideas, feel free to put your pencil down so I kind of have a sense of who needs a little more time. <coughs> I'm not picking them up. Uh, you're welcome to take them with you or put them in the recycling bin when you're done. You're not going to get a grade. Okay. I think pretty much everybody is, has got a couple of ideas. Okay, so young kids, especially if you're designing anything for young kids, they, they are going to put down lots of ideas. They're just going to be a little more uh, free about expressing themselves, not so worried about being right or wrong. They'll write down lots of ideas, and then what are they going to want to do? Try them out. What do you want to do? Do you want to try it out? No? You don't want to try it out? <laughs> Well, what I would like you to do next, as, as students get older, they, they, sometimes they don't want to do this. It doesn't matter if you can do all the ways and get, get the light bulb to light in multiple ways or you can't do any. I just want everybody to try to get it to light in one way here, okay? Try out the ways that you have, and if they don't work, that's data for you, right? That's data that tells you that it doesn't work this way, try to find a new way to make it work. And so what I do is I let the kids just have some time. You can work as pairs. If you see somebody else has it working, you can ask them. You can compare, you know, how you're doing it. I'm not going to watch, okay? 
I'm not, it, there's, no, there's no judgment here. Just try to get it to light at least one way. And I'll just give you a little hint. I give a hint to kids because they get really dramatic about this, but one of the ways that you can tell that it's not right is if the battery and the wire get really hot. Okay, because what happens there is that you've got a short circuit and probably the light bulb's not lighting. And so you've got to get a way to get it into the light bulb. Okay, and so don't, two things happen. Either the kids go, ow, or the, you know, some of the kids start to get a little ornery and they put their paper in there to see if they can light the paper and those kinds of things, but I don't want you guys to do that. It's just a clue that it's, it's not working. So see if you can get it to light one way. Did you get it to light one way? Mm -hmm. Did we? Yes. Yeah. All right. Do you guys like to draw on the board? <laughs> Would you like to draw that, that design up on the board for me? And maybe make it like this big? <laughs> How many like a hint? Can I give anybody a hint? Okay. Did you get did you get it to be hot? Yeah. Okay. So you're on to something. All right. So that tells me that you're using both. Well, we did it to yeah. We did it the same way other people. I it's just not lighting. Okay. So let's see what let's see what you, uh, well, start it out it for both me. Ways, putting the light okay. bulb on both sides. All right. Here, put it underneath like we've been Put it underneath. Doing. All right. Okay, so you're using both sides of the battery, both sides of the wire, okay, and that makes it hot, right? Okay, so you have two parts of the wire you're using and two parts of the battery you're using, and there are two parts of the bulb you have to use, and one part of the bulb you're already using, which is the bottom, okay? Is there any other part that... Oh! Okay. Can I see what you just did? All right. Do you want to uh, draw that on the board next to that gentleman's picture? Okay. Now, can you find some other ways to get it to light? Can you guys get it to light? Okay. Can you get it to light if it's upside down? Yeah, we did that one. Okay. Can you show me how you get it to light upside down? Could you draw that on the board and like make it about that big? Okay. And did you get it upside down? Yeah. Okay. And how did you do it upside down? Oops. Okay. That way. Is there another way you could do it upside down? Yeah. One part was uh, so this was touching that. How about if the side touched? Oh, and then you touch the bottom. Oh. Okay. I don't think that's connected down there. Oh, we'll sorry. That. There we go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. could you draw that next to hers? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to sort of uh, keep going here because uh, actually the point is not to exactly teach you about um, simple circuits, but it's sort of a byproduct of the work that we're going to do today. But one of the things that I, what was one of the things that I just did after people started uh, getting the light bulb to light? What was, what did I just do? What did I just do? 
Yeah. Okay, so I didn't draw them up on there. I, I, it wasn't something that I found. I walked around, and when certain people were able to find something that worked, I just asked them to put it up. But I knew which four configurations that I wanted. Okay, so at this point, the students have found out on their own and with a partner. And in some cases, I can provide some hints. So one of the hints I could provide was um, if they get it to burn, that means that they're almost there. And so I tell them you're using both parts of the battery. That's good because a lot of children will draw a picture of a battery and then just the wire going to the bulb and not use both parts of the battery. So they're using both parts of the battery, using both parts of the wire. And it turns out that there's two parts of the bulb. And if I go through the entire lesson, they'll learn about what the bulb structure is like inside. But if you look inside there, there's a little filament. And that little filament has one part of the wire connected to the side of the bulb, and the other part of the filament goes down to the bottom. And so that's why you use the side and the bottom. Okay. And then basically these are all the same configurations. And the students and I, we don't have time to do it today, but what we would go through is a process of looking for patterns. And what they'll notice is things like in all of these configurations, we use both sides of the bulb. We use positive and negative. Okay, so that's going to be important in our circuits. As a teacher, I know that's going to be something I need them to know. They're going to be using both ends of the, the um, wire. And then they're going to be using both parts of the bulb. Okay, and there's never any time where there's a path that can just go through the battery. And so we come up with sort of these rules or these patterns, and then I ask students to extend their knowledge by doing some more complex circuits. Let's use two bulbs now in one battery, or let's use two batteries in one bulb, and we start building on that. But they have the idea, the simple idea, the fundamental idea of how to put together a circuit. And I can tell you that in many classes, many physics classes, students never get a chance. I don't know what your physics, how many of you took physics in high school? You know, had a chance just to work with a battery bulb and wire, okay? You did a lot of circuitry and, and diagrams on the, the board and did a lot of calculations maybe, but a lot of students have never just picked up a battery bulb and a wire to see how does a, how does a simple circuit work. And then we do things like we measure the amount of current so that they can see what happens when we have uh, two resistors, when we have two batteries, and just different things. So it builds from here. But this is very fundamental to understanding electricity. Okay? There's two things I want you to take away from today from uh, this lesson. And I'll, I'll hammer these home uh, not just by telling you but also in a video and uh, in the PowerPoint. One is that we learn by generating and revising our knowledge. Okay? We come into learning experiences, even young kids come into learning experiences with beliefs, with experiences, with knowledge, with things that influence how they're going to interpret what we as teachers tell them, what we as teachers show them, what we as teachers design for them. And you guys, I'm imagining that many of your projects involve some kind of design of learning experience, experiences. So they come, maybe not with full, you know, uh, explanations of how something about the world works, but they've had experiences that are going to influence how they interpret what you're doing. Okay, so we are not blank slates. Learning is generative and it's also revisionary. So a lot of you had ideas already about how you might put these together. You may never have thought about it before, but there was something in your intuition that told you what parts probably need to be put together. And if it didn't work, it was just a matter of revising your knowledge. Okay, it didn't work when it was hot. Okay, I've got to do something different. I realize, oh, there's two parts of the bulb. If I use those two parts, the bulb lights. You're revising your knowledge. But I can't do that for you. All I can do is set up the experience. Okay, so learning is generative. It's revisionary. Okay, and then the second thing is that the learner has to expend the mental energy. And all too often, we, we uh, sit in lectures and, and get all the equations and we're told how to plug and chug or we're told how to do this diagram or we're told this explanation and you can follow along sort of, but how much do we memorize? I think a lot of our schooling is memorization, right? 
memorizing is not the same as understanding. When you expend the mental energy to understand something, you're going to learn it better. Okay? And so those are two takeaway messages today that we're going to focus on. And if we have time, we'll come back to this activity because it relates to what I want to show you next. Many years ago, and since this time, so this was, I, I think this might be 20 years old by now, but we have had tons and tons of research in the last 25 years, cognitive science research, learning research, educational research in the individual disciplines that have helped us understand how students learn. Okay, and this is, this is a interesting video that came out as uh, science education was really making an effort to try to change the way that science has been taught. And so we're, what I'm going to do, I don't have time for the full video, so I'm going to show you some uh, little parts of the video. And then uh, if you want to look at this video, it's, I, I'll give you the website, but there's several on here that would be really informative if you're really interested in uh, learning. Okay, let's see. Graduates of Harvard and MIT. The and there's Institute one little thing that they say that might be offensive to us. We are us. the premier engineering and science institution in the world. <laughs> Do you think you could light a bulb with a battery and wire? Do you think you could light a bulb with a battery and wire? Yeah. Light a bulb with a battery and a wire. Maybe. Yes. Definitely. Do you think you can light a bulb with a battery and a wire? Battery and wire? Oh, yes, why not? Okay. Definitely. Okay, can you do that? The interesting part about the batteries and bulbs question is that people always predict that they can do it. Students say, of course I can do this. Yeah. Any hints I should have here? Teachers say, of course my students can do this. Ow! Oh. Do you know why that didn't work? I have no idea. The battery could be dead, the bulb could be bad, I'm hooking it up totally incorrectly. I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer. But if I had to guess, I would say it's operator error. Okay. I know it's possible, but I don't know how to do it. It's only after failing that you begin to get upset with the question and think, well, maybe it's a trick question, maybe this has something to do with manipulating the wires, they couldn't hold all the wires together. You don't have a current if you only have one wire, you need a completely closed circuit. But that's not the case. Oh, uh, well, if I do it with a little light bulb, I just do this. <laughs> In which case, the, the light just lights up. It goes to the fundamental understanding of electricity. If one cannot light a light bulb with a battery and wire, then everything built upon those basic ideas has problems. We've always assumed that if teachers teach, students will learn. You can't assume that what's blatantly obvious to you and has always been blatantly obvious to you is going to be that way to somebody else, especially a kid. 
Uh, and uh, that's where you have to stop, regroup, and, and say, wait a second, is this really, is this really as self-evident as you'd like to think it is? Sometimes the simplest problems in science defy intuition, and the most basic technology is surprisingly difficult to grasp. Is it because we weren't taught? Or is it because of something deeper? Something about the way we think? Okay, and then there's another one more clip. Harvard University, and the Smithsonian Institution. Soak up learning like a sponge, absorbing knowledge as it's passed from teacher to pupil. Now I want you to consider something about rolling things. That means you have got this ball, okay? Yeah, but as we'll see... Ten more seconds and it'll be at the slowly, point. Carefully, clearly. If a student's thinking isn't taken into account, students often fail to learn. More. A lot of times we like to think that what you're doing uh, really, you know, really got across, and uh, a good deal of the time it does. I think. Uh, but once in a while, you know, perhaps more than you'd like to think, uh, uh, they miss crucial areas. So they, they, there's some things that they didn't quite get as as well as you'd like to think that they got them. What Edison came up with was a way of uh, to demonstrate why explanations sometimes fail. Mr. Carter agreed to let us videotape his lessons. So it would last for a while and give a, a fair amount of life. Jennifer is one of Mr. Carter's best students. Let's see how well she learns. So they came up with this little guy, and it's clear so you can see what goes on inside. Mr. Carter's goal was to explain that to make the bulb light, electricity has to flow through the filament in a cycle, in through the base of the bulb and out the side. Now, inside the light bulb, basically, enough things to make a complete electrical circuit. If you've got the electricity going in, let's say, the, where the threaded base is, it'll go in through that wire that we looked at, up through the filament, through the filament doing its trick, and out the base. And that's what, you know, electrical circuits are. They're loops, all right? Uh, okay. Here's some wire. I may not have given you enough. I'm going to give you four pieces of wire, at least to start with. Then I'm going to madly start cutting some other pieces of wire. See if you can come up with a way to get all three of them on once. Jennifer followed up what she was taught with hands-on activities designed to reinforce the concepts. Yeah. Jim Carter spent almost a month covering advanced topics in electricity in addition to batteries and bulbs. We interviewed Jennifer one month after the lesson. Mr. Carter observed the interviews on a monitor in another room. Okay, the, the video doesn't have audio. Uh, if you had like a battery, and you it, on to yours. Up the battery to make the light yeah, bulb, the, what light you do? Yeah, that video doesn't have audio. You just need some yeah. TV wire. I mean, you can hear it from back there, right? Could you draw something? I mean, like the recording was it? I, okay, that's fine. Jennifer yeah, yeah. is concerned that without the equipment used in class, the bulb can't light. You can just show me how you feel. Can I, can I use something to plug the screen light bulb into? Why is the light bulb itself? Like the thing you yeah. use in class? Like this thing here? Yeah. Why, why would you need this part? Um. I don't know. We can't. <laughs> it just won't work. <laughs> Now here you started twisting there, and why did you do that? Just to keep the wires in contact with each other. Okay. Can we try to light up the bulb and see? To, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll hold it for you. Okay. Okay. Jennifer didn't light the bulb. No. It didn't work. Okay. But even more surprising was that the mistakes she made were exactly the same ones she made before um, the lesson. And then they were both connected to the bottom of the light bulb. What happens if that wire gets too hot? 
Jim Carter's careful explanations had done nothing to change her mind. The electricity going in, they'll give you back what you gave them, but they can't take it another step beyond necessarily because they really didn't understand and grasp and internalize the concept that you were, you thought you, that, that you had presented in such a clear way. Intent to hear.